Uh, we're going to get through this together. Um, but a little bit about me, I'm sure a lot of you guys know. Uh, my name's Chris, like he said. Uh, I've been at this church for about 13 years, 12 years, something like that. Uh, ever since I was in Elevate, uh, me and Cade Bowen, some of you guys know him, uh, we, we've been through Elevate, through GeForce, Faith Kids, all the way up into um, uh, Faith Youth Church together. So I've been here for the past six years in this youth ministry. Um, um, and just the first thing I, I kind of wanted to, to talk about and get off my chest was, it's not about me. It's not about you or John or Andrea or, or Pastor Shelley or Pastor Stormy. But they're, they're great people, don't get me wrong, but it's never been about us. You see, I mess up, I make mistakes, I do what's wrong, I miss the mark. And then I, I'll continue to be that way because that's who I am. I'm a sinner and we're all sinners. But he's saved us, he's changed us, and he's changed me. And just as he's done that, he's had, he has the ability to do that to you. So I just want to impart that to you guys. It's not about us. Uh, I'm, I'm a cool guy, I guess, but like I serve an awesome God. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm nobody special with that God. And, and I don't have the ability to do what I'm doing right now if it wasn't for him. And, and I want to encourage you that each and every one of you has the ability to do this. You have the ability to be on the worship team. You have the ability uh, to serve in any capacity because of the God that we serve. Um, and, I, and just also off of that, it, it's, it's very, very prideful uh, to think that anything that I've ever done or anything that I haven't done is better than what he did on the cross for us. It's super prideful to put myself and my actions in a place that is above Christ and above the redemption that he imparted in us. And so with that, we're, we're just going to jump right in and pray. Uh, if you'll bow your heads and close your eyes with me, Father God, I thank you for this time, uh, um, for the message that you've put on my heart. I pray that it would uh, it would speak to the hearts of these young ones, Father, and even these old ones, Lord, um, that you that their minds would, would be open and their hearts would be soft to hear your word, um, and that they would take it. It wouldn't just be uh, a void, but it would, would bear fruit in their hearts, Lord, that you would put fertile soil in the heart of each and every one of these students here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so... Um, like I said, when I was talking to John, I really wasn't sure what I was going to talk about, but something that the Lord kind of put on my heart after after we went to uh, YFN, and uh, again, this is not anything for those of you who went to campus for everybody, uh, but this was something that he kind of imparted in me, and it was uh, putting the work in. And it sets it up there, and, and I didn't just choose that theme because I like to go to the gym. I actually chose it for a reason. Um, and if any of you have ever have ever worked out, uh, you understand that, that once you once you uh, get to a point uh, when you when you're doing the last reps of your set, there's a point where there's discomfort. There's a point where, where there's so much tension and it hurts. And I chose that for a reason because the things that I'm about to go over with you, they're not going to be comfortable with you, and that's okay. See, because when I'm working out, I don't care about the discomfort. I care about the result. Yeah. I don't care how much it hurts. I care what what happens at the end. And that's the exact same way that I, that. that we should be with the Word of God. We shouldn't care about the discomfort because He's going to call you to discomfort. And it's up to you whether you obey that or not. And when He calls you to discomfort, it's not because He wants to hurt you or He wants, he wants to um, do anything to you. It's because there's a result. He's wanting to add to the kingdom. He's wanting to build the kingdom. And so I want to start off by saying that. But um, more importantly, I wanted to kind of break free from the keep the fire going cycle. And the way that we do that is we put the work in. And so uh, the, the first passage of scripture that I want to take to you guys to um, is Exodus 16. And I'm going to kind of summarize this, but basically um, Exodus is all about the Israelites and Moses is leading the Israelites. And um, what, I've, what I've come to learn about the Israelites is they're a bunch of complainers. Um, they, kind of, they kind of frustrated me. They kind of annoyed me when, when I first started reading this book it's because all they did was complain. Um, and up to this point, they're, they're talking to Moses, and they're like, they're whining about everything. They're like, oh my gosh, like, you literally brought us out to this desert, to this wilderness to die. Uh, you, there's no food out here. Like, what, what's going on? We're going to die. And, and God being the gracious God that he is, which I can never do this. I'm glad I'm not God, because I would have just been like, all right, bet I'm going to shoot some other people. Uh, but he said, I, I hear your commands. I hear your complaints. I know that you're hungry. So what he does is he, he uh, rains down holy manna from heaven. And the, the Bible describes this man as, as a little, like, honey bread. It's like a little frosted crisp that he would put on the, uh, on the horizon each morning. And so um, that's where we're at at this point. 
And so we're going to be reading 16 through 21. And so this is Moses talking to the people of God. He said, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need, one or more for each person, according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. Then the children of Israel did so and gathered, some more, some less. So when they measured it out by homers, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no left. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. And Moses <coughs> said, Let no one leave any of it till morning. Notwithstanding, they did not eat Moses, but some of them left and stank. All right, I'm so sorry. Some of them left a uh, part of it until morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. So they gathered it every morning, every man according to his need. And when the sun became hot enough, so you see off the bat, like I was talking about the Israelites, like even after he provides for them, they still mess it up somehow. They still take too much, and they still leave it out to morning just like how uh, commanded them not to do. And so there's a lesson of obedience, and, and just off of that, like if if you have the opportunity uh, where the Lord's grace is surrounding you and, and he's calling you to be obedient, just be obedient. To take what he says and be obedient to it. Don't try to take advantage of the will of God. Don't try to take advantage of the people of God. And, and the blessings that he's given to you. But what I, what I really wanted to talk about here was that um, some of them left part of it until morning. It bred worms and sank, so they gathered it every morning. You know, as a youth group, we've gotten so used to living off of yesterday's bread. Some, some of you are, are, are clinging on to bread from three weeks ago. Some of you are clinging on to bread from a year ago. Some of you are holding on to bread from the last time that you had an encounter with Christ. And I'm here to tell you that that bread is no longer of good use to, to give you nutrition anymore. And I'm not saying that the Word of God is void and it's not, it's not useful. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you're trying to use that to sustain yourself while that bread has worms in it. It's got mold on it. It's no longer good for you. But you keep trying to live off that one thing. And if you keep trying to live off the bread from yesterday, you're never going to get to tomorrow. You won't get to tomorrow's bread. You, you won't replenish the morning because you want, you're so caught up with one piece of bread that has already molded, has already crusted over. And that's the beautiful thing, because in the natural, we, we buy bread, and we'll, we'll throw it in the fridge, and it'll last us for about three or four weeks. But in the spiritual, you see this bread, every single morning it went bad. Because it was so imperative for them to get it every single morning. And so that's what I encourage you with today. Get fresh bread every single morning. Whether that's being in the Word as soon as you wake up. Whether that's praying as soon as you wake up. Get fresh bread. Yeah. Don't let it sit out. Don't let it, don't let it just sit in you and then it's just moldy now and, and it's not good for the season that you're in. Get fresh bread. And so, um, kind of moving on from that. Uh, the, Lord, the Lord put uh, four, main, four main keys on my heart. And I don't want you to feel like this is just like some generic, like, oh, he found it and it's cool and it sounds good or whatever. No, this is like, so these are things that, that also I, I need to draw from too. These are things that the Lord put on my heart and it, it actually means something to me as well. And so I, I hope that you would, you would take it for what it is and you wouldn't just write it off. Um, but the first key is find it or reflect on it on when you found him, found it. Um, and for some of you that might look uh, like Saul on the road to Damascus and Saul was on his way to persecute Christians. He was on his way to sin. He was on his way uh, to, to take control of God's people, kill them, throw them in prison, do whatever. But I'm here to tell you today that even in your sin, even, even in your shame, even in your condemnation, even in your persecution, God will meet you. God, God, will, God will see your heart, and he will give you every opportunity to stop. Don't disqualify yourself from that. And for some of you, uh, you've known his goodness. You've grown up, you've done this church thing, uh, it, it's become so mundane to you. Uh, you you've, you've done the will of God. You, you come to church Monday, or I mean Sundays and, and Wednesdays. And, uh, it's just kind of like I go through the motions, like, yeah, I know that I'm supposed to be doing more, but like, this is just kind of what I do. You know, my mom takes me, my dad takes me, my parents take me. Like, we just come and that's just what we do. You know, I mean, it's just it, God, the, the will of God, the words of God, the, the, the things of God are not just so so. They're not just like, oh, well, I just kind of do this. I'm, just kind of about it, you know. No, like He's called you to, to get into action. He's called you uh, to do His will and, and to not just go through the motions. You're not called to be a go through the motions kind of Christian. And so, so uh, what He put on my heart here is in Revelation. 
It's in Revelation chapter 2, uh, verses 2 through 5. And it says, I know your work. Or this, he's talking to uh, the church of Ephesus, which is known as the loveless church. And he says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear with those who are, who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand.